This is episode one of You've Been Gilmore with Mary and Blake. La, 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 la. All the way from Cranston, Rhode Island, welcome to You've Been Gilmore. It's a podcast dedicated to the show Gilmore Girls on Netflix. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and a pint of ice cream and enjoy the show. I'm totally going to be singing to that, as probably are all of you. Because we could have gone with the the real theme from the Gilmore Girls, but we didn't. So nonetheless, my name is Mary Larson. My name is Blake, and I am proud to be a Gilmore Girls fanatic. And you know, I, I never, ever would have thought that I would have ever said that in my life, ever. But, but then you met me. But then I met my wife, and she has <laughs> just changed everything. I have. I have, <laughs> truly. So I, I actually... Um, have have been a fan of the Gilmore Girls off and on throughout my my young life because the Gilmore Girls Girls was airing actually when we were younger not like little kid younger but you know like normal normal age people who watch TV and I watched it from time to time but I wasn't the dedicated fan that I thought I would have been and I blame my parents for not letting me watch tons of TV. And then I was at school and I studied a lot and I didn't watch a lot of TV there either. And then I met Blake. And I learned the wonders of watching lots of TV and movies. And and I uh, my during my pregnancy with Felicity, yeah, it was with Felicity. Yes. So my my recent baby, she's just just shy of uh, two years. She was born in May, so she's about a year and a half right now. When I was pregnant with Felicity, I was sick as a dog. I was on <laughs> bed rest for. Oh, How many months? Like pre- six months? Pretty much the entire pregnancy. It was really bad, guys. I was in the hospital way too many days a week, and I found Lorelai. It's like people <laughs> who found Jesus. I found Lorelai. <laughs> and it really, um, it was the perfect show because I loved the length. I loved how I laughed. And suddenly... Someone started uh, commenting on these episodes because I would watch it like all day. You know, you just Mm -hmm. thank you, Netflix. Yes, go to the next one. Go to stream. And then when Blake would come home from work, he'd be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. (laughs) Who is Rory dating right now? Did you watch episodes without me? Here's how it happened. Because, you know, she'd be watching it at night and I'd be working in the day. And, you know, I'd come home and I'd be tired. So I'd be in bed. She'd be watching and I'd be trying to sleep because... You know, she has been miserable. My son is like, having a hard time sleeping, so we're both tired. At any rate, I go I go to bed, and then like I'll catch like five to ten minutes of each episode, and I I would say that this lasted for maybe the first two seasons, uh, and then all of a sudden, I would come home, and then she'd be watching. I'd be like, "Hey, what are you doing? Are you watching it without me? What? What? What are we doing?" Because like I would catch up on on all of the things that were going on with, with Lorelai and Rory and, and all of them, Logan and, and, and not Lo- Logan was later, but um, with, uh, with Jess and, and all, it, all these guys. And I, and, and I, I couldn't get over the fact that when they were speaking, it was, it was like dolphins talking to each other. Like, I, like <laughs> dolphins. it was like, do- <laughs> you know, like I, I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't like it. I didn't like it, but then somehow, some way it just infested my brain and yep. I I couldn't stop watching it and mm-hmm. I fell madly in love with Laura like Gilmore. I Amen. mean like madly. In fact, I fell so far hard and in love with her that I convinced my best friend John to watch the Gilmore girls and now he is on an eternal quest to find his Laura like and you more. convinced Ryan, another best friend. That's right. That's right. So you hopefully- convinced two of your guy friends. So if any of you are watching our guys and are like kind of keeping a little secret that you watch the Gilmore Girls, <laughs> don't be. Yeah, don't be ashamed. It's okay. L- listen, you know, for those of you who are listening to the podcast right now uh, via the iTunes app, we are actually doing this live on our Facebook page, uh, so a lot of people here can uh, watch us as we talk in our studio. Uh, but. I, normally, I would be wearing my dragonfly in a uh, dragonfly in not in amber, but dragonfly in. Uh, <laughs> Look at you cross pollinating oh the God. fandom between Outlander and Gilmore Girls. I'm going. I'm freaking out here. Uh, normally, I would wear my dragonfly in T-shirt as we podcast, mm-hmm. uh, but I figured I would save it. I would save it till the new season opens up. Okay. 
And uh, and I again, like I, I know I said this earlier, I am proud to be a Gilmore Girls fanatic. I really am. I I love the show. Um, and it's one of those shows where you can just kind of turn your brain off and watch it in a good way. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Like there's just so much chaos and and just filth and crankiness in the world. And especially nowadays, like honest to God, the Gilmore Girls could not come in a better time. I don't know about you, but everyone I know is freaking stressed out about this week with the election. <laughs> and even if they're not like super passionate, they're stressed out because they're like, I just want everyone to shut up. Right. I don't I don't want to go on Facebook. I don't want to go on social media. I don't want to do anything except crawl into my bed with a nice cup of coffee and watch some Netflix because all of that noise, it's just getting to me. So I am so excited. Mm-hmm. Little did they know that like America was going to need a new dose of Gilmore Girls. So, you know, before we really jump into this, yep. you're a guy. Like this is the Gilmore Girls. I know there's another really popular podcast called the Gilmore Guys. Oh, if yes. you guys haven't checked it out. Listen to them. They're totally fantastic. Totally listen to them. They're awesome. But, you know, you said that you convinced two of your male best friends yes. to watch the Gilmore Girls. Yes elaborate please no i just i i knew that i loved the show and i and i knew okay and what what grips you about the show is the unabashed charm and it's like it oozes with with uh charisma and it oozes with charm from all of the characters whether it, it's um whether whether it's emily gilmore or if it's richard gilmore or it's lorelei I'm, I'm not as sold on rory I think Rory, okay. you know, it is what it is. I think, you know, I think she tries. But when you when you start putting them all together, when you start putting uh, Luke and Lorelai together, you start putting Emily and Lorelai together, you start putting Sookie and all those people together, it just, it, it makes this giant cauldron of just chemistry that a lot of shows don't have. And that's funny to say because, you know, this was a show that was on the WB, right? Mm-hmm. And you don't expect... It, it, when I think of the WB, I think of like Animaniacs, right? It, it, okay. I think of uh, Seventh Heaven, and that's oh. another, that's another one of those shows that okay. it was at the, right around the same time, as a matter of it fact. Was, yeah. Um, but it was right around that time, and I think of that kind of show, and I think that's I think those shows, well, Animaniacs rules, uh, but Seventh Heaven was lame in my opinion. I just thought it was so boring. Hey, be careful. That's, however, that's know, Justin Timberlake's honey. Uh, however, however, Gilmore Girls seem to bring it to another level. Specifically because of the acting, but also because of the writing from Amy Sherman Palladino, the creator of the show, the mm-hmm. showrunner. Okay, mm-hmm. and you know, for those of you who have not listened to us yet, and, the th- uh, and for those of you who have listened to us, you know how much of a nerd I am. Amy Sherman Palladino was the showrunner. She was the person who wrote, well, not all of the scripts, but many of the scripts. She was in charge of the show. A showrunner is the person who is in charge of a show's direction. They are they are in charge of where it's going, where the story is heading, why certain characters are doing certain things. They're also in charge of other things too, like uh, budgeting, and uh, which eventually Amy Sherman Palladino got in trouble with with WB. Dun dun dun. Uh, later on, we'll we'll get into that later. Uh, but they're in tar- they're in charge of budgeting. They're in charge of uh, of marketing. They they the 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 showrunner is the voice of that show. Ron Moore, for example, is the showrunner for. Uh, Outlander. Oh my God, brain fight. You were just cross pollinating. <laughs> I know. And now you have a brain fight. And yes. they, they are also, uh, he was also the showrunner of Battlestar Galactica. Uh, and the Damon Lindelof was the showrunner for Lost. And now he's the showrunner for The Leftovers, another podcast that we have, uh, another show about a podcast we have. So th- when, you, when you start getting into that, it's all, it's really because of her vision, I think, that made this show so special. Because it was unique characters in a unique setting, and she was providing a unique relationship between the mother and daughter that you really had not seen yet in television, mm-hmm. right? I mean, w- would you agree with that during that time? Not only a mother and daughter, but a young mother. Like, that's right. one of the things that really stood out to me about Lorelai Gilmore. Like, she gave birth while she was a teenager. She was a single mom, and yet she was killing it in in her life. You know, she was she was able to be smart and be successful and be sexy and do all these things while juggling being a single mom of a teenager Mm -hmm. like that is i am so scared about our kids being teenagers (laughs) i can't even imagine doing it alone and i just thought that um having a television character be a single mom and be able to be um 
both of them were very sexual. I'm just going to say it. Like, it was something different that CW often portrayed in, like, teens and, like, you know, young people or whatever. But I thought it was really kind of bold and very empowering for women, if that even makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, it makes total sense. It makes complete sense. And because of that, again, I think we've seen, we have the success of the Gilmore Girls. And not just success, because, I mean, at the time it was a... It was a relatively critical success. I mean, getting some Oscar nominations and Emmy Award nominate not Oscar, I'm sorry, Emmy nominations. It, it had achieved a certain level of, um, it was it was not renowned, but it, it was successful, okay? Yes. However, it has since become a cultural zeitgeist, I think, because it reminds people of what life was like and what it could be going forward. If... <laughs> We all had Lorelai in our lives, or we all lived in Stars Hollow, right? Oh, damn it! Yes, I wish I did. I know. I would. I can't wish. I'm in Cranston in now. Oh my god! I like Cranston. Cranston's good. Cranston is convenient. <laughs> it's got everything here. Anyway, uh, so for those of you again who uh, have listened to us uh, before in our podcasts, we have a very familiar setup. Uh, we kind of run our shows the same exact way uh, for each and every for each and every show that we do. Um, and especially when it comes to television shows, uh, we have this rating system, uh, that we do, uh, you know, for the leftovers, it's how many Damons, you know, it, 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 do we like the episode? Like five Damons would be a great episode and one Damon would be a really crappy episode mm-hmm. for Outlander. It's how many kilts, uh, and five kilts would be great. And I think for this, for this show, baby, yeah. I think the most, I think the most pertinent way to describe a good show for, Gilmore Girls Mm -hmm. is Cups of Coffee. Oh, look at that. I'm prepared. (laughs) I'm prepared. So uh, I think we're going to do that. We also have this thing called the GBG, which is the good, bad, great. And uh, every episode, we give a good part of the show, uh, of the episode, a bad part of the episode, and a great part of the episode. Uh, And these are our rating skills. And uh, not skills, but these are our rating tools. Uh, something that we we all do. We actually encourage all the listeners to come in and give their GBGs and their and their kilt or Damon or now cups of coffee rating. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we we expect that from from the listeners because the more that you engage with us, the more entertaining the show really is. Uh, so please be sure to engage with us when you get a chance. You will have your own voice here on the show. Uh, and we will we will always celebrate that. That's and the most important part. For those of you who are joining us Facebook Live, because this is our first episode and we haven't been able to have listener feedback yet, if you are in our Facebook Live chat, I just posted that if you have a GBG of all of the Gilmore Girls, you're good, you're bad, you're great, leave it below and we might read it at the end of this episode because, uh, yeah, you can join in. We actually have Melissa Carolyn saying coffee cups are great, but I might have wine in mind though. I will not judge you, <laughs> Melissa. I will not judge you at Not at all. all. And if you have any questions in the meantime, and, and for those of you who are listening to, to the podcast and the iTunes episode, uh, iTunes app after this has been aired, please, you are just as important in this uh, in this relationship that we have uh, with us and the listeners so even though you're not watching us live right now that's okay try to catch us live next time uh if not send us an email send us uh facebook messages send us whatever we will get to you and you will become part of the episode as well you are just as vital to this as the live uh viewers so my love are you ready to get into the show or do we have anything else that you'd like to uh talk about uh before we before we do it i'm ready all right let's do it ready let's get it let's get into the show All right, Blake. So we are we're going to start this off with the GBG. Are we doing GBDs now? Yeah, we're going to do the GBG. Okay, so what is your good about all of the seven seasons of my, Gilmore Girls? Okay, my good, I would say, um, is... I would say it's the setting. I know that's kind of a cop-out answer. No, because it's the same one that I had. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> oh, stop Did you not it. look at the Google Doc? I didn't look. I put stars oh, hollow. Oh, did, oh, my God, you did. Okay. Um... <laughs> You know what? All right, I'm gonna. You here we go. Pick a different good. No, 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 no. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. Do you one better? Because I just saw one of your answers. The good was the ending. Loved. Oh. Loved the ending. I did. I really did. And I know. And this is what we were talking about earlier. I know that the show had a different showrunner for season seven. Mm-hmm. The ending for season seven. And a lot of people, a lot of the Gilmore Girls nerds, man, they pretend like season seven didn't even happen. It doesn't even exist, right? However, and, and I agree with you, season seven was, uh, it was tricky 
and uh, it did not have the same feel as the pre- previous six seasons. It did not. But I felt that they got the ending right. They got the ending right because, again, this show is about the characters and seeing um, Rory go on to do the campaign for President Obama and a, a spoiler alert uh, and going on uh, and leaving leaving Stars Hollow, but still celebrating the fact that they're all together in the tents. It's raining and this is the big party and they're all driving up. They don't know what's happening. And Luke sets it all up in the middle of the night. And I, I tears were just streaming down my face because it was a satisfactory ending for the characters. Right. Would you, would you at least give me that? Sure. <laughs> now, again, this is all based off of our memories of season seven. We, we have not rewatched the, the show yet. Uh, we are going to rewatch the show. Uh, once we get into the specific episodes uh, and we're going to rewatch those specific episodes, but this is all based off of the memories that we have. So so the bad that I have is where the hell was Mrs. Kim in season seven or like towards (laughs) the end of the, uh, towards the end of the run after the babies were born. Yeah. She just, did she just up and left? She probably had to work at her darn antique shop to pay for all the baby (laughs) stuff. When you have twins, that is not cheap. Never seen her again. Just, just went away, disappeared, don't know where you went. That is literally your top bad. That's my bad. That's my bad. I'm giving because everything else in the show, I can't say. You're not talking else. about the bangs. I mean, we no, all know about the bangs. I know, I know. But listen, I'm I'm not too worried about that. I, the plot point that Rory just went. <laughs> she went cray cray. Way way cray cray. She went a, like Lindsay Lohan. Stole a boat. <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> maybe that's what it should be. She went all <laughs> Lindsay Lohan. Ooh, that's a good one. I mean, I don't think she was doing crack, but no, you know. <laughs> but like Rory version of Lindsay crack Lohan. and sex sex tapes. <laughs> no, no, wasn't wasn't that extreme. Yeah, how much cocaine boat. did Rory actually do? <laughs> oh my god, none. <laughs> no, but yeah, I mean, I agree. The, okay, the, so the whole bad thing was Mrs. Kim. The whole thing with Rory was bad, but yeah, Mrs. Kim, like that was that's bad. Like that was a character that they had used throughout the entire show. It's kind of was like there a, no explanation. Of no, where there she was went? no explanation. She, she just disappeared. It was like the the missing uh, the missing cousin from the Brady Bunch. Maybe she went on like a pilgrimage with her religious religious friends. <laughs> Maybe she went to go visit her exchange student. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But the fact that it wasn't even addressed in the show, I feel like, was a little bit of a cop out. And again, that's probably due to the fact that that there was a showrunner change uh, in that. In the great, the great. It, uh, this is another cop out answer, but I have to give it. It was the characters. The characters just sucked you in, man. Whether whether or not it was Lorelai or anybody, they just sucked you in. And you couldn't help but love the relationships that you were watching on television. You were invested. And you were invested like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was it. And um, is it sometimes a little cheesy? Like the Friday night dinners. Could that be cheesy? Yes, that could totally be cheesy. But that episode with the Friday nights all right for fighting when they're when everybody is fighting all at once and they're showing all the different interactions and how Emily wanted to buy a boat and, and how Rory was quitting quit uh quitting uh Yale and all this it was oh my god, just genius, genius stuff. Uh and because of that, and you couldn't get away with any of that if you didn't have the emotional investment that you had earned Preach. via the characters. Preach. All right, what do you got for your good, bad, great? Okay, so my good was Stars Hollow. I love Stars Hollow. I am so flipping jealous that Stars Hollow doesn't exist because I would move there. I would literally pack up everything I own and I would go work any job whatsoever to go live in a place like Stars Hollow. I want a snowman competition. I want <laughs> all of those festivals. Like all you know what I'm talking about. Like literally all those random I little want festivals. A snowman competition. Whoa, sorry. I want all of those There we go. Blake, Got it. Sorry. Blake, what just happened? It was like God except me. No. <laughs> it was I I am God. No. Um I, I just loved Stars Hollow. I love that Lorelai never made breakfast because she couldn't, you know, it was like pop tarts and cereal so that she would just go to Luke's every single day. And we can't do that in most places. You, I mean, there's very few places where you can just walk to your diner every day. A, that'd be expensive. Mm-hmm. Girl, you don't make a lot of money. You just work at an inn. Okay. Yeah. No, she thinking, owns the end. Well, now she owns it, but in the beginning, she was just working at all it. All right, I'll give you that. She that's why she didn't have any money because yep. she spent it all at Luke's. Well, Luke <laughs> didn't really charge her. No, so I just how could he? He wanted to get in on that. That's yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> so that's, that was my Let's that was my honest. good. I just adore Stars Hollow. If I could move there, I would. My bad is the ending. Oh. So I know that that was you're great, but I didn't. No, it was my good. Okay, you're good. Okay, let's get that straight. Okay, yeah. Um, I just I really wasn't a fan of how it all ended. I wasn't a fan of uh, Rory's story being the way that it was, and that I didn't get to see Lorelai get married. Um, I didn't like how everything was with her and Luke and Luke's daughter. And I just didn't like how everything was handled. I felt like I laughed so much and loved these people so much. And then it started to get a little wonky and you get to the end and you went, Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Bye. You, you know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of high school or college graduation when you had like some pretty good friends and then you're all crossing the, the little thing. You get your diploma and you move your little tassel over and then you're like, Oh, bye. I'm, I'm never going to see you again. I, I thought we shared some really good times and this is kind of awkward. Bye. <laughs> bye. Like it didn't, it didn't leave me like parenthood. So I watched parenthood because of the Gilmore girls. Parenthood had a solid ending. I mm-hmm. felt really good about it. Those of you who've watched it, you might be echoing what I'm saying right now. Mm-hmm. That is why I'm excited about this season. Right. Because it wasn't a goodbye. Netflix said, oh, no, no, no. We agree with Mary Larson. We need, we need to revisit this. My great is actually the community that the Gilmore Girls has brought about. Not the community in the show, even though that is precious beyond belief. But the community like of the podcasters, of mm-hmm. the friends who get together and watch the, the show, of the people who are so excited that they are not doing anything all Thanksgiving weekend because they are going to be watching the Gilmore Girls. Of the people who went and stood in line when there were pop-up coffee shops to be Luke's <laughs> diner. Like, we tried to go. There were two in the state of Rhode Island. Both of them had lines like 50 to 100 deep. I know one of our friends, Jessica Rhodes, she was in the, the Facebook chat here. She went to it, got to get the swag. There was a guy actually dressed up just like Luke, who was there, who wasn't actually working at, right, the, sh- at the shop. He was just dressed up because he was super excited. And how cool is that? It's kind of like... I didn't know all these people existed in my life. And now that Netflix, like I knew these people existed, but I didn't know that they were Gilmore Girls fans until Netflix said all this about season eight. And Mm. now we're all resharing this stuff on Facebook and we're all excited. And I just, I love it. As I said earlier, I am so happy that Gilmore Girls is coming back and it's been such a tough time here in America. And I love that I can say, I am so happy (laughs) about watching something. So uh, hey, that's couple, my great. A couple of things here. Megan Mary Millette says, hey, Megan, by the way, she says the good was the super fast dialogue. She, she liked the dialogue. And then she said the bad, the super fast dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> if she gets distracted, she missed some awesome fun side comments. And, the, and I think she meant the great here. The great was Jess. And she said she put hashtag team Jess forever. You know what? Jess can really seriously just. Watch yourself. I'm, I'm not a Jess guy. I am. I, I'd rather be Dean, even though. I thought you had great hair. <laughs> you had great hair. My God. And you know, when you're in high school and you're like, you got good hair. Megan also brought up the knitting festival. Oh, like, yes. Good stuff. Take me to the knitting festival. We and also, I also, yeah. I also want to say hi to Tim Gould, by the way. Tim. Tim, Tim, my boy. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate that. Fernando Lario said the good. I discovered Fleetwood Mac. Thanks to this show. And the bad. I concur with Rory being just meh. You know, it, so you either love or you hate or you hate Rory. And Tiffany Loeb says, I'm with you, Blake. Jess is just the worst. He, he is. Jess is, he's a dink. I don't even care if they, they brought him back and he was like this poet and he had his own little thing and it was just lame. You're just trying to, you you're trying to retcon a character because you wanted them to be cool. It's okay. And you, you wanted to give a foil to Logan. And by the way, I'm not a big Logan guy either. I, I think, I think Logan can. He can go where J- Jess goes, in my opinion. Oh my God, you're uh, Team Dean. I'm no, I'm not Team Dean. Y- yes, you are. I'm not Team Who Dean. Who are you then? I'm Team Nobody. I'm not. I wasn't a fan of of, of all of them. But none of them were Dean, worthy of Rory. Dean was the lesser of the three evils. Okay. Okay. So. And Grace McLeod says, "Good Luke's diner. I always wanted the food. Me too. One of those pancakes. <laughs> the great was the mother daughter friendship and relationship, and the bad was when Rory dumped Dean." Oh, <laughs> so many tears. So many tears. So, my love, what do you got for your coffee cup rating for the series of Gilmore Girls? I'm cheating. I'm drinking tea because it's late at night and I can't have caffeine. <laughs> well, tea has caffeine. 
This was called stress away. It better not have caffeine. <laughs> it was one of those. Like, yeah, your stress goes away because you bounce it off the walls. It's like Coke. Oh God, stop! <laughs> okay, uh, my coffee rating. What are we rating it out of? One out of five. Yeah, one out of five coffee cups. Like for, it, for, for the whole for the whole run, in comparison in light of rather all of the other shows that we've watched throughout, you know, the time that you've been watching TV. Like where would I'm you put it? I'm giving it a five. Up? It is up there. Wow. It is up there in my top ten. For those of you who've been listening to us for quite some time, you know that Mary loves to give out fives. Why are you gonna hate that I'm an optimist? <laughs> why? I, I love hate it. life and I love the show. And that's why you know, I married you. Otherwise I wouldn't watch it. You've tried to make me some watch some shows and I'm like, this sucks. Well, like what? Like what oh show God, sucks? What was that Western one that was so dead? Deadwood. <gasps> so boring. Oh my Done. God. Bye. Oh my God. Peace. Watch out. Don't 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 put down den- Deadwood. They're, they're going to be people here. They're going to have problems with you. Whatever. That one would get a one. Right, How so, about you? So, so getting... yeah, my coffee cup is a five. Yes, I think that there were some stumbles and trips along the way. Um, I think that there were some weird things done with some character development that just completely confused me. And I didn't love the ending. But because there's a new season coming out, I forgive them for that. Um, I, as I said, the community that Gilmore Girls has brought about, the just it was such a different dynamic of a show. I've never seen anything like that. Holy smokes, could they talk fast? I thought I could talk fast. Those, no, I've no, got they, nothing. Got I've got nothing, nothing on, on Lorelai. Um, and I think that it was Melissa McCarthy's fa- like my favorite thing that she was ever in, and she's been in a lot of things that I like, and I think she's an absolute hoot as Sookie. So, uh. There's one thing actually. I think I want to revise my bad. I think I want to revise the bad. You want to know why? Because Stas Hollow is too good of a place for the state of Connecticut. Stop. <laughs> I'm sorry. Connecticut is just not a good state. Nowhere in Connecticut does it look like Stas Hollow. It probably does. Some people in in Connecticut have some nice nice stuff. I, I don't care. I don't care. Maybe like right <laughs> over the border. Like, maybe the ones that that like the towns that are close to Rhode Island. Maybe they look like Stas Hollow because they might as well just be Rhode Island. What do you mean? I'm just telling you. I, no, it's, it's Connecticut. Connecticut. You're blaming Stars Hollow for being too perfect. Uh, no, I'm blaming Connecticut for sucking because <laughs> it doesn't deserve Stas Hollow. That's I'm not what I'm, saying this. I'm going on record as not <laughs> agreeing with this. <laughs> So yeah, I think I'm going to revise my my, okay. my bad. But anyway. So that's our coffee. What's your coffee rating? My coffee rating, I'm going to give it a 4.6. What the heck with these points? I like the points. The points matter. The okay. points matter. So it's like an A plus? It, it, no, it's like an A. It's like an A. Well, you're kind of giving it like a 95. And then with the 0.6, it's more so it's, like a 96. Which So it's an A. Oh, crap. You're right. It is an oh, A. Oh, boom. You know what, my love? You know, one of the f- favorite things we love to do here on Mary and Blake Media is we love sound effects. And for every time someone does something wrong or says something wrong or does something stupid, they, they get this. Oh my God. That's what they, oh, you know what? Let me replay that. Because wasn't there we go. Stupid. That, no, 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 it wasn't stupid. I just said it was wrong. You, you get a ding. <laughs> when you do something wrong, you get a ding. Okay. So, uh, yeah, 4.6 4. Uh, cups of coffee for me. Um, I really liked it. And the great, the reason why it gets actually that high of a rating for me is because normally I'm one of those guys that just totally overanalyzes shows and I expect great things yes, from great do. shows. Uh, and I expect great shots and how visually beautiful it could be and how the writing is. But this was the kind of show that it didn't matter. Like Seinfeld, it didn't matter that it wasn't the greatest shot show of all time it didn't matter if it was you know if you could tell when they were driving it was just a video screen in the back and they were just driving a dummy car it it didn't matter to me because the writing was so exceptional Mm -hmm. and that is what the Gilmore Girls is for me the writing is so exceptional and the acting is so exceptional that it just it blows all the other stuff away and because of that, it gets a 4.6. Um, some of it, it, it some of it does hamper it a little bit. That's why you get the rating that you get. But because of how great it is, you're up that high. And when I say 4.6, don't don't take me for like um, that I'm hating on it. I'm not. I say 4.6 thinking like the greatest shows of all time are like a 4.9. Okay. Okay. Like Breaking Bad. That's a 4.9. Okay. That That's like <laughs> a 4.9 buckets of meth okay that's what that would be or lost would be would be like a 4.9 4.9 planes falling from the sky like that is what i consider 
the greatest shows of all time. Mm-hmm. So when you put that at a four point six, th- you're you're pretty up there for me. You know what I mean? You, you get what I'm getting at? Yeah. Okay. So you know we are coming, we are getting along in the show here, and I think we're about thirty five or minutes or so in. Let me check. Well, technically, we were only about a half hour in. Um, but anyway, what we wanted to do today was we just wanted to introduce ourselves to you. Um, we talk about what we have done and how much we really love the Gilmore Girls. And the, the, the way we're going to approach this podcast. Now, a lot of podcasts will do every single episode going up to the new, uh, the new season. Now, unfortunately, Mary and I, we have these little things called kids. Oh, I thought you were going to say gremlins. <laughs> well, gremlins, too. I do love our children. I, I um, do. Yes, I love them. I do. They just, they they keep us very busy so that we can't <laughs> podcast until 8 o'clock at night. And then if we want to watch a show, too, then we got to go to sleep because right. they wake up at the crack of dawn. And tomorrow is daylight savings, uh, yeah. so we don't get an hour. And we don't get an hour because we're parents. And we get nothing. That's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm getting at is this. Um, people will probably do the whole seasons, all seven seasons, all 150 some odd episodes of Gilmore Girls. And you know what? Good luck to them. Have fun listening to that. Please go find other Gilmore Girls podcasts. It's all about getting different perspectives here. The community that I was talking about. Right. And what we do here at Mary and Blake Media is we talk about how you feel about a show how does it make you feel as you watch it what is your experience with that show and that's what we grade that's what that's the cups of coffee what's the experience with it Mm -hmm. now because we like to engage it on an experiential level we have decided to approach our um our podcast a little differently we are going to do the top i think 12 episodes uh, of of Gilmore Girls, but in a way that is much different than what you're thinking. Not like, oh, we love this one best and that's next best and that's next best. What we're going to do is we're going to break it down by characters. Like, what was the best Lorelai episode? What was the best Rory episode? What was the best Emily episode? Because again, like we talked about, the characters are what matter in this show. Mm-hmm. And you have to you, you have to elevate yourself and you have to allow the show to elevate itself to those characters. And then you, you have to judge it by those characters. And what we are going to do for those of you who may be a little rusty on your Gilmore Girls episode rewatch, mm-hmm. we're going to make sure that those 12 episodes are in this episode show notes. So you can go back and head on over to Netflix and brush up on them because we want to make sure that we can kind of relive it with you and also get your feedback about things like your GBGs or things that you didn't right. like about that episode. So in today's show notes, if you go to um, our website, maryandblake.co, or if you go to iTunes and just your podcast app, you'll be able to see what episodes we right. are going to be talking about. And we're about. gonna we're gonna start with the pilot episode, obviously, uh, just because it's the pilot. And um and I think the next episode we are going to do is actually the best we're gonna you know, we're gonna start off big. That's what we're gonna do after the pilot. Okay. It's gonna be the best Lorelei and Rory episode. And in our opinion, that was uh those are strings, Pinocchio, and that was some from from season three, episode twenty two. Uh and I'm gonna just gonna leave it at that. We're just gonna leave it at that. So start with the pilot and then go to season three, episode 22, Those Are Strings Pinocchio. Those will be the next two uh, episodes that you'll be seeing from You've Been Gilmore. Uh, so yeah, what we're hoping to do is we're hoping to do everything by character uh, because the characters are what matter in that show. But for now, because this is the premiere episode and we're not talking about, an, about another episode, we wanted to go over some really cool stuff that we have found out over time about the Gilmore, about Gilmore Girls. Uh, stuff that has come out since this show has ended. Uh, good things, bad things, and uh, just give you some good, you know, like kind of trivia stuff. So, okay. uh, my love, why don't, we, uh, why don't we start off? Well, I just want to check on the battery level of my phone. Uh-huh. Okay, yeah, please do that. Well, then, <laughs> as you're doing that, I'm going to save you, and I'm going to start with mine. Um, do you know that the Gilmore Girls, the, the show title was obviously originally Gilmore Girls, but they were going to change it to the Gilmore way now i gotta tell you i'm so freaking happy that they changed it from the gilmore way back to gilmore girls because the gilmore way it's not it's not as like catchy because 
the Gilmore way is about the whole family, but the girls is more applicable to the show. Amen. Would you agree with that? Yes. And just so you know, I couldn't see the battery level. So if we magically die at some point on our Facebook feed, I apologize. I don't think we're going to die. I mean, you had you had like 80% left. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, so I agree with you. Gilmore way. Gilmore girls. That's what it's all about. As I said earlier, it's all about the girl power, about females. And um, yeah, that would have been very, very difficult to swallow. Another another fun one was Lauren Graham, who obviously famously played Lorelai Gilmore. She was played, she was hired to play Lorelai just one week, one week before the pilot episode was scheduled to be shot in Toronto. And just one month before Gilmore Girls was scheduled to be announced as part of the WB's fall schedule in New York. Just one month. Can you imagine that? You know, <laughs> I, what would have happened? Yep. What would have happened to the show without her? It's crazy. It would not have been the no. same at, at all. No. At all. And uh, Rory, uh, she had zero TV experience when she was actually cast to play Rory. Uh, in, in what they wanted to do is they wanted to help her along so they got Edward Herman who ended up playing who obviously played Richard Gilmore mm -hmm. uh, they they kind of like used him uh, to be her mentor and that he would take her out for, for dinners and he would like be like okay this is what you got to do this is how you got to approach it just make sure you follow my lead and he took care of her that's really cool isn't that great took her under his wing unbelievable so you know there's a whole bunch of other things here too like the Gilmore Girl, Girls scripts tended to be about 35% longer than the scripts for the average one-hour TV series. So the way that it works is you usually have one page for one minute per uh, per episode. So you have 60 minutes or, you know, well, actually it would be 49-ish, uh, 44-ish to 49-ish, depending on the commercials or whatever. But so you're looking at about 44 to 49 pages per one script for one episode. And now they're talking that the Gilmore Girls were 35% longer than average one hour TV series. For the first few seasons of the show, the, the uh, Rory recorded herself reading pages of limericks as fast as she could to train herself to, to be able to deliver that trade more Gilmore rapid fire dialogue wow. every single week. So you're talking, I, I mean, 35%. So that is four... That twelve that's an extra fifteen pages or so of so instead of having forty four pages, now they're having sixty pages to fit into forty four minutes worth of television. Can you oh believe that? What, what else we have? Um, April, who was a major snag, of course, in the Luke and Lorelai relationship. A lot of people did not like the character of April. We know that like angsty preteen who came in and just it was a cock block, for lack of a better word. Um, so get this, Vanessa Morano, who actually played Luke's daughter, she was a Gilmore Girls fan, and she didn't like April either. She said, when I got the breakdown for the role, I was like, you're giving Luke a daughter? This is going to break them up? Oh, my God. I mean, I hated myself. How can I do a character like this? So uh, for those of you who don't like April, don't worry. April doesn't like April. <laughs> you know, Jess... Um was supposed to launch a spin-off series that would revolve around him called Windward Circle. Cheryl and Fenn, who, pe who played the girlfriend of Jess's dad, Jimmy, in the episode of uh, Here Comes the Sun, would return to Gilmore Girls in season six as Anna, Luke's ex-girlfriend and the mother of the daughter he didn't know he had until he was almost a teen. Can you imagine that? Can't. So you were talking about the uh, how long the scripts were, how they were an extra 35 pages longer. And get this, Gilmore Girls Workdays often ran 21 hours long, oh. which meant crew members who, who you know, didn't have their own personal trainers would race, use their times back and forth to grab uh, a nap because they were, they were working so hard or even in cars. They even had cars that were parked on the streets of Stars Hollow that crew members would sleep in to like catch a little nap because they were so tired <laughs> out of control hey talking of spinoffs by the way the planned jess spinoff that i just mentioned wasn't the first choice for gilmore girls follow-up what the wb actually asked amy sherman paladino to spin luke off into his own show but one she did not think the character would ever leave stars hollow and two she didn't want to split up luke and lorelei well geographically speaking anyway because we both know that she had no problem speaking uh, splitting them up uh later on so yeah spoiler alert by the way and 
there were so many people that came along in Gilmore Girls, like the people that you wouldn't really think, like famous people now. Like obviously we know Melissa McCarthy. She she was on Mad TV at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, she would go back and like she would go back and forth, and almost she almost had to quit Gilmore Girls because of it. And now she's become, she you know, even handle that. she's been, she's, she's now M- Melissa McCarthy that we all know, Ghostbusters and Bridesmaids and whatever. So we all know that. But there are other Gilmore Girls guest stars, uh, such as Adam Brody from the, the OC, mm-hmm. uh, John Hamm, who is on Mad Men. Yep. John Hamm, um, Secretary of State Madeline Albright, Seth MacFarlane, who we mm-hmm. all know from Family Guy. Um, a pre-Breaking Bad Kristen Ritter, who is now starring on Jessica Jones on Netflix, uh-huh. actually. And uh, Empire co-creator, you know, the show Empire on Fox. The co-creator, Danny Strong, uh, was on there as well. Uh, Danny Pewdie. And CNN journalist and Rory's career heroine, Christian Amanpour. Can you believe that? A-, a porn star was actually on was on Gilmore Girls, Tracy Lords. And Nick Offerman, who we, who was on Parks and Rec, mm-hmm. he was on the show as well. So many people. <laughs> so if you haven't watched the Gilmore Girls recently, wow. doing the rewatch is going to really make you say, oh my God, oh my God, I know that person. <laughs> so get this. So we're, we're talking about all the hard work that you've done, all these other stars who've been on the show. And Gilmore Girls, in all seven seasons, only won one Emmy. Only one. It's crazy. And you want to know what it was for? For outstanding makeup. <laughs> what? For the season four episode of the Festival of Living Art. Oh, but my still, God. It's so stupid. Like, that's what it wins the Emmy for. Blake and I hate, hate, like, you know, awards because they're <laughs> stupid like this. Like, are you kidding me? Makeup for the Gilmore Girls. <laughs> Out of control. Oh, my God. So, you know, there, there are so many other things. Um, the last thing I think I, think I kind of want to mention is after her split with the network, Amy Sherman Palladino, uh, she saw um, Gilmore Girls out of the hands of now the current showrunner, David Thor- David Rosenthal. Uh, and she says, uh, Amy Sherman Palladino, that to this day, to this very day, she still has not seen that season seven, the one that she did not run. Wow. Has not watched it. Just doesn't believe that um, <laughs> it's it's worthy of uh, of her time. That's okay. I'm just going to keep my mouth quiet because we all know how I feel about it. <laughs> so uh, th- I think that's it uh, for all, uh, th- that's as many uh, of the cool facts that I have here about Gilmore Girls. We did get another GBG from oh, what- one of our Facebook Live listeners. We have Melissa Carolyn says that her GBG is that her good is Stars Hollow. Her husband is from Connecticut, and when Sorry, she Melissa. moved to the U.S. from <laughs> Ireland, she was crushed. That it didn't really exist. Oh. I think we should all try to make. <laughs> Melissa thinks that we should all try to make our own stars hollow wherever we live. And I think that is a brilliant idea. Her bad is I think the show lost a bit of its heart when the creator, Amy Sherman Palladino, left. The seventh season just wasn't all that. And the ending felt rushed and unfulfilling. unfulfilling. And the great is the relationship between Lorelai and Rory. My mom had me very young. And we were close like them. It uh, felt true and familiar to me. And even now, a year after my mother passed away, oh, I'm sorry, Aww. Melissa, um, I can watch Gilmore Girls and not feel sad, but get that warm and fuzzy feeling the show gives and be happy that I had that special mother-daughter relationship. That, that is, you know what? That I mean, that right there is... Bam! Just like that. That is unbelievable. That is the essence of what I think Gilmore Girls is trying to capture and that that's a living living proof right there that that's how that show can touch you that's how that show can grab you Mm -hmm. it's not about being fancy it's not about having these beautiful shots it's about that experience it's about that relationship it's how you deal with it and how we like to deal with television too so there you go. I mean, Melissa, you, you just nailed it. Great yeah. job, man. I don't even need to say anything more. I, that, that's much, much smarter much than more. anything I would ever say. More, more yeah, eloquent. And more touching. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, my love, uh, you got anything else? Why, final thoughts? What, what do you got for uh, final thoughts for this, uh, for this episode? Yeah, the premiere episode of You've Been Gilmore. Um, I'm really excited that it's the new season is broken up into seasons. And my favorite season is winter. So I think that's the one I'm looking forward to the most because <laughs> I like Lorelai. I think that snow is magical. And that'll so, be the first episode, by the way, winter. I know. I'm really excited. I know you should be excited. 
I'm excited. How can you not be excited? It's the Gilmore Girls. We need to take a picture just like Laura, uh, like Lorelai and Rory looking up with snow. Oh, no. Th- we th- should recreate those pictures, all of those pictures. Those They're pictures were so awkward. awkward. Let's recreate them. I, you know what? That's a good idea. I know. That's what we're going to do. And anybody, anybody that's listening right now, please recreate those photos and we will put them up on our website. <laughs> I swear to God, we will do it. We will have so much fun. We'll put it up on the screen here that I have uh, for us. If you could see it i'm gonna have to of course they could see it it's huge i'm gonna have to figure this out no it's not big enough it's not big enough we're gonna have to figure it out i'm gonna have to buy a new tv oh how's God. that sound Get listen if, if you want to buy a new tv vote yes Put yes in the comments new tv oh my god no <laughs> no no Let's see how many no. yeses we get well my love i think it's time to close out the show are you ready to close it out yes i am <laughs> yes for the new tv no for the new tv and yes to closing out <laughs> all right let's do it Thank you all so much for taking the time to listen to our premiere episode of You've Been Gilmore with Marion Blake. We're going to continue the conversation on social media. Just always make sure to include the hashtag You've Been Gilmore. Don't use punctuation because it messes up hashtags, guys. <laughs> Just hashtag You've Been Gilmore. That's right. And and please uh, make sure you always get back to us in some way, some form, somehow. Uh, whether it's through voicemails, call 503-454-6730. That is our hotline. What's or, that number again? You said that like Laura said it very quickly. 454-673. No. <laughs> what? See? You can only say it fast. 454-67. You don't even know. You know, I you got me all you got me all screwed gonna up. I'm gonna have to, have to look recording. it up. Now. No, 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 no. I'm not gonna stop. Hold on, I'll get it. I, okay. I got it. So you can call this number that Blake's gonna magically find. You can also head on over to our website. <laughs> it's five zero three four five four six seven three zero. There we go. There, there you go. Five zero three four five four six seven three zero. That's the hotline. You can also head on over to our website. It's Mary and Blake dot. C-O. And leave a all, comment there or yeah. do, any, do anything that you like there. Or go to the Facebook page. That, Which that, is also facebook.com slash Mary and Blake. That's right. You know what? I'm so glad we got this first episode done. I, I am pumped. Good. Me too. And thank you so much for those of you who've joined us on Facebook Live. We are going to continue to do some Facebook Lives. So we'll let you know when those happen. Send in your feedback about your GBGs about uh, you know the, the premiere episode put that on our Facebook wall shoot us a message you guys are great thank you so much and I'm so excited about the Gilmore Girls <laughs> until right. next time I'm Mary Larson my name is Blake and you've been listening to You've Been Gilmore <laughs>